Okay, my friend Roger, once again, this is going to be a lot of fun. Now, you know um, that I do a lot of things involving the things that are in space, which exists, and it's all real out there. So please, stay away from that stuff. If you would, I'd appreciate it. What I'm going to show you is the things that they're talking about, comets and asteroids and all that different stuff. And there's something coming through it right now. It's called um, 3i, yeah, 3i Atlas. Yeah, 3i Atlas. And um, it's doing some kind of crazy things. They're saying it's maybe not natural. Well, Avi Loeb from Harvard. I follow and he's discussing it and I would love to talk with Avi about this but I will show you my interpretation and I'll show you about other bodies that are in space that have actually been visited including Bennu just recently they brought back a sample of it we're going to examine that Psyche is another one very very well photographed another one is Comet 67P they landed a lander on there these are things that I've followed very closely, and if you can deny them, well, then you're just a denialist. I follow these things. I know what happened, and I know what the result was, and I'm going to show you, then you make your own determination. All right, but you have to see it first before just discarding or, or accepting anything. And that's what I get. People either accept or they discard, but a lot of times they don't, they never even examine it. They just make a determination very quickly. I want to see the evidence and I want to show the evidence and then I want to discuss the evidence. Okay, my friends, I do not accept this statement and I will address it with some facts to contradict it quite convincingly. Now, this is Dr. Ph.D. Brandenburg. And he says, 3i Atlas is not a comet. It's not a comet. Comets are dirty snowballs of ices and silica dust, usually dominated by water, ice, but also more volatile ices like carbon monoxide, which vaporize beyond Jupiter. And then he goes, this other comet displayed this, Umaumau did not. 3i Atlas is now emulating the later. Be alert. Well, what is that supposed to mean? Okay, my friends, I'm just going to let it roll. This is from a place called a NASA Space News. And they're telling what's going on with this asteroid, comet, whatever they want to call it, that's coming through our solar system right now. And uh, this is an unusual object entering our solar system. They say from outside our solar system. It doesn't happen very often. That's their claim. It's called 3i Atlas. Now, I'm just going to play it and you can listen to what it has to say. What I really want you to focus in on is the coma that's created from a comet. It's when it cooks that thing coming through space and it gives off literally gases that are associated to biology and I can prove this. This is no speculation. Initially thought to be an asteroid, it was soon identified as a comet, but this was no ordinary comet. It is the third known interstellar object to be discovered following the arrival of Oumuamua in 2017 and 2i Borisov in 2019. At 7 miles 11.2 kilometers wide, it is one of the largest interstellar objects we've observed. Its speed, traveling at about 130,000 miles per hour, 210,000 kilometer per hour, is considerably faster than most objects in our solar system, which caught the attention of astronomers. The comet is on a hyperbolic trajectory, meaning it will eventually leave our solar system and continue its journey through space. What makes this object even more fascinating is its behavior. As it approached the sun, it began to show the typical signs of a comet, a coma, which is a cloud of gas and dust and a tail. All right, let's just stop right there for a second. 
why is that blown off? They say it's, it's a comet, cloud of gas and dust and a tail. Yes, well, what, what's the gas made out of, first of all? And the dust is not just blowing off dust. I'll show you exactly what it is right now because we could see the other one, comet 67P, very clearly. They actually landed on 67P. It's quite obvious that that is a hip joint. That's Comet 67P. And it's gassing off like crazy where? It's not just dust. It's gassing off out of an artery and all of the little blood vessels that service the tissues that would have been around here. This is stripped down to the bone. Now this is broken right off here. Normally you'd have tendons and all kinds of stuff, muscles wrapped around here so that you can do this, move your joints and so forth. Now, here's what happens as it comes through space. Once it gets close enough to the sun, it's not just dust blowing off here. You can see it's quite obvious, not dust. It's only shooting right out of the little blood vessels and wherever they pointed, it's, that's where the juices and the gases are shooting into space. Gases and dust and whatever they want to call it. That is the artery. That's the gigantic artery. And when I say gigantic, that thing is 500 feet across. 500 feet. That's what fed all of this stuff with, with blood. And it is a, it's a hip joint of some kind of a creature. I don't know where it came from. But I'm going to go into a lot more depth into this. But they, they have the chemistry. It's all here. I have it all. And I'd love to talk to Avi Lowe. He was claiming that this could be an interstellar spacecraft. Well, it's an interstellar finger. That is one gigantic finger. That's the apical tuft. That's the grip skin, the friction skin that's eroded away. That's the tendon. That's the joint. All those little dots there are where the, it invests into the bone. I got one here somewhere, right down where it ties in. You go, come down here, you got a million little holes. But there's one big flap of tendon and then a million holes. And then on the other side, it's got the same thing. You know, it's got, of course, it's a not at the same type of bone, but all of these come through here and they, they have little tiny balls at the end of them. Those straps anchor in there. I mean, I'm talking anchor. That's a fingertip. <laughs> so we got a lot of thinking to do here. Now, Avi Loeb has an open mind, but they really, you know, they go after him. Well, let me just show you what they say about him. Okay, so he's saying 3i is gassing off similar to a mua mua. And then the guy's going to kick something in here. It goes. Alert, he says. Well, Ron James, Media Di Relations Director for MUFON, the Mutual UFO Network, um, is joining us now. He's also the creator of the film Accidental Truth. And, uh, of course, James, uh, Ron has to deal with all of these reports that come in at MUFON and then goes out and actually investigates the veracity of these claims. Ron, great to have you here on the show for the first time. Nice to meet you. I'm going to come back to this, but I would love to engage with him about the stuff that I have. And I think it's pretty, pretty solid evidence. At least it needs to be discussed, and then they can go about their way or whatever. All right, you see this? This goes back 10 years ago. That is the artery. Huge. Absolutely enormous. And it's shooting out smoke exactly like you would cook on a grill because the astronauts say space smells like steak, roasted steak and burning metals, which is exactly what happens if you did bl blood. And these are the little blood vessels coming up to this, this hip joint. And there's muscle, there's tendon, there's an artery, and there is a ton of little blood vessels, and they go in every different direction to service that body part. And you say, what body part? And I say that right there. That's exactly the body part. Now, this one broke off here, which would be about here. They break here, they break here, they can break anywhere. And it's, this particular is from a human um, pelvis. 
It's the hip joint. Now, is this human? I have no idea. But that they, they have, um, you know, all biology has a similar construction if it's a vertebrate creature, which it is. Now, this, remember this big blast out of here? That's this right here. It's 40 meters wide is here. There's about four of those in here. Maybe five. That's a lot of meters. So let's go 150 meters, whatever. You see these balls here? Those little round balls, they call them dragon balls. And they're all over inside here because that's an artery. And that feeds blood into everywhere. All of those little things are endless. Now, the Russians had sinkholes collapse in their biology too. And all in the winter, all of those little balls, instead of rolling out there as a ball, they would freeze up and there'd be little balls all over the place inside. Sinkholes are the same as this because they're in biology that was frozen and it's, they're collapsing. This wasn't frozen, this is just out in space. And, they're, and they're, everything out there is biology, I don't care what you say, I'm seeing it now. I have meteorites in here right now, no question whatsoever. They're body, body parts and, and, you know, body tissue. No question whatsoever. No, I'm not going to drag you through the ditches here again over and over and over. I have shown that this is a hip joint. It's fractured here. And it has arteries, well, it has an artery, and it has a bunch of little blood vessels, and they are blown off their, their meat smoke. Basically, as astronauts say, space smells like cooked steak. And, that's, and it, that's it right there. That's the blood burning off. And it only does it when it gets close to the sun. And the sun has to have enough radiation on it to start it cooking. It's like you turn it too low on your grill, it just doesn't cook. You get up close to the, then you got this. That's the artery, enormous. These are little blood vessels, just little, but they feed off into wherever the tissue is. 100% biology here. And this thing is enormous. All of these, this is 40 meters wide, one, two, three, four, maybe four or five times. All right, all tissue has to be fed with blood. And these little dots, they call them dragon balls. That's where the blood feeds in into the tissue. This is an artery. Now, there's going to be other ones that carry more blood through, and then there's going to be the, the, um, capillaries and the whole shoot match is here nothing but biology and again I showed you this I'm sure I showed you this and that's where that blood is boiling out of there I mean it's literally cooking there's just no oxygen so it doesn't combust and it's blowing all that smoke into space these are the little blood vessels and that's the main feeder and this goes back 10 years ago and they did all the chemistry on here, too. They landed a, a craft on this comet. It was the European Space Agency. It was called the Philae Lander. I followed that thing just as close as anybody. And I even have the chemistry of it, too. It's right here. These are the two particles they picked up. And they, you know, it's hydrocarbons, the different uh, iron states. 100% biology. They admitted it. They said it's all organic. You know, that's the way they say it. Instead of saying biological, they say organic. But it is. And you can see the technology is undeniable. I mean, the, uh, the look is undeniable. It's just und undeniable. And it cooked off. And it is huge. This is Raleigh, North Carolina. You see the size of that thing? These are the things that are in space. Psyche. You see that? That's psyche. That's a heart in space, 140 miles across. It's a heart in space. Bennu is a heart in space. They went out and they landed on it. Here it is right here. Same thing. It's got the same valves, a little scruffier. But they went and they grabbed a chunk of it and came back to Earth with it. And it is somewhere around here. Well, it looks exactly like this because they're heart sarcomeres. Hold on, I'll get it. All right, this is what they came back from Bennu with. They went down, grabbed this, came back, and put it in a 
perfect capsule. It's got DNA, RNA, uracil, all the chemistry. It's got sarcomeres, which are muscle blocks with this phosphate surprise, which are the phosphate layers that are membranes, one on air, then another one, and then here, and then there. They're on layers. That's the bundle. That's a, a cord of muscle fibers. They, they wrap around your heart and, and, and they end up being little blocks like this. And those blocks contract. I have all the evidence on this. All I need to do is have somebody talk to me. And here's a heart on earth right there. A heart attack, just like this. The guy had a heart attack. I explain this over and over and over and over, but you know, once you explain it, a couple of days later, it's done. So I'm just going to have to keep doing this over and over until somebody takes it to their professors and says, you know, has a confrontation. Says you guys are just not doing your job. You got to talk about this. You got to look into this. And that's what has to happen. Has to happen. I would say right now. Okay, this is just a little teaser for the next stuff I'm going to be doing. We're going to be talking about some of these formations and we're also going to be talking about the Rocky Mountains because I sort of overlooked that for a long time and I want to talk to some people that have evidence about Montana and all that area because I think I know some people that have evidence that we want to look into. But I'm just going to tease you with this because we've missed most of everything that's on Earth. Just dismissed the possibilities. Well, not anymore. All right, check this out. In the remote wild lands of Western Australia, you'll find a massive maze of striped domes. They're orange and black, layered like cake, and they go on for miles. From the air, they look like organized chaos. Like nature started building a city, but only finished the outer walls. Each dome is shaped like a half-buried bell with ring bands caused by ancient sediment and time. And when the sun hits just right, they seem to glow from the inside. No one knew they existed until the 1980s. They were hidden, not because they're small, but because the land keeps its best work secret. That is totally incredible. 